The Six Swans from 50 Famous Fairy Tales. There was once a king who was forced by trickery to choose for his second wife, a woman who was the daughter of a witch. However, the king was wise enough to hide his seven children from their stepmother, for he knew that she would harm them if she could. He took them to a lonely castle which stood besides the midst of a forest so thick that no one could get through without the aid of magic. A wise woman had shown the king this enchanted castle and told him how to reach it. When the king threw a ball of magic yarn before him, it would unwind itself and lead the way through the forest to the castle. In this way, he could visit his children as often as he liked. He felt sure that they would always be safe. One day, the stepmother heard the servants talking about the king's six young sons, and she was determined in her evil heart to find them and get rid of them. She learned something of magic from her witch mother, and so she used this power to make the six little shirts which she could cast an evil spell on whoever wore them. She kept both ears open and her tongue quiet and soon learned about the magic ball of yarn. The next time the king was away, the wicked queen took the yarn with it and found the enchanted castle. The six young princes came running to meet her, for they thought she was their father. Before they could turn and run, she threw the magic shirts over their heads, and instantly the six boys were turned into swans and flew up over the forest and away. The queen went home well pleased with her evil trick, but she did not know that the seventh child, a beautiful young girl, had remained in the castle and seen the whole thing. Alas, sighed the maiden, how can I bear to stay here in the castle without my brothers? I shall go into the world and rest neither day nor night until I find them. So she started out, keeping her eyes on the sky in hope of seeing the six swans. She walked all day and all that night and all the next day. At length, she could keep her eyes open no longer and knew she must find a place to rest. Just as she thought she could go not a step further, she spied a small brown hut at the edge of a marshy stream. There was no one in the hut in the hut but six beds neatly made with white spreads and ruffled pillows she stood up against the wall she did not dare lie down the beds for fear of annoying the owners but she curled up on a rug in the corner and was soon asleep presently she was awakened by a strange rustling noise she opened her eyes wide in amazement as six beautiful swans swooped down through the open windows before the maiden could cry out the six swans formed a circle and began blowing at, at each other the white swan feathers blew off and vanished, and their skins came off like shirts and ste out stepped the six brothers. The maiden rushed to them, trying to kiss all six at once. At the last, the eldest brother stopped with the glad celebration and saying, Our joy has a short life, little sister. We are our own selves for a quarter hour each evening, and the rest of the time we are swans. The maiden was sober for a moment and then said firmly, A quarter of an hour is better than nothing. I shall stay here and wait each evening for your coming. The eldest brother shook his head sadly. No, no, little sister, this hut belongs to a band of wicked robbers. When they come home and find you, they will kill you at once. But the maiden would not be daunted. Surely there is a way to break this wicked spell, she said. Yes, we have already learned it, answered the brother. But alas, it is too difficult for any human being to accomplish. For six years, you must neither speak nor laugh. And in that time, you must make a shirt for each of us. You must make the threads yourselves out of nettles. And for this moment on, if a single word falls from your lips, we shall evermore be swans. The maiden pressed her lips firmly together. What must be done can be done, she thought to herself. At this very instant, the quarter of an hour was finished and the brothers became swans and flew off over the marsh. The maiden went at once to gather nettle nettles. And although the rough leaves stung her dainty hand till they were red and blistered, she said not a word, but kept it until she made the nettles into thread. Then she built herself a hut out of sticks. And in the top of a huge oak tree, she lived there like a squirrel. She neither spoke nor laughed, but kept steadily at her work. One day, the king of a nearby country came hunting through the forest. His huntsman spied the maiden and called her to come down. The king also beseeched her to descend, descend, for he had fallen in love with her at the first sight. The maiden did not answer, but the king would not be discouraged. He boldly asked her to be his bride. The maiden said no word, but she nodded her head. The king leaped from his horse and climbed the tree and fetched the maiden down. She came with him willingly and brought her great bundle of nettles. Joyfully, the king placed the beautiful girl on the saddle before him and hastened home. The wedding was celebrated with feasting and merrymaking, but all through it, the brides had not a word. 
The king soon grew used to her silence and was happy and contented with his sweet, gentle bride. He let her knit all day long and brought her soothing oils to heal the blisters made by the sharp nettles. All would have been gone well if it had not been for the king's jealous stepmother, who had been used to having her own way at court before the young queen came. When the young queen's baby was born, this jealous stepmother stole it from the cradle and told the king that his wife had destroyed it. Since the queen would not speak to defend herself, the king had to believe his stepmother. The poor young queen was condemned as a witch in order to be burned alive. A great fire was kindled in the courtyard, and the queen was led forth, still knitting on the last of the six shirts with the other five brothers in a bag at her belt. For it was the last day of the six years. Only one sleeve was left on the last shirt remained unfinished. The queen was bound to the stake, and the red flames began licking her clothing. Just then, the air was filled with a great rustling of wings, and the six beautiful swans dropped from the sky and flew about the queen in graceful circling flight. As each bird passed before her, she threw a shirt over its head. Instantly, the birds became six handsome youths who leaped upon the flames and stamped them to ashes. But the youngest of the six had one arm only, and the other was still a swan's wing because of the unfinished sleeve. Now at last the queen could speak and tell her husband the truth. The jealous stepmother was forced to bring back the baby, which she had stolen, and the whole palace was filled with great rejoicing. The jealous stepmother was so angry that she went into a fit and died, but the king and queen and her six brothers lived in happiness and peace.